Hi, this is Dr. Ben Morrill. Welcome to episode 50 of Reptile Genetics Weekly. Happy to have you here with us. We're getting close to the one year mark. That was our original goal was to do at least 52 episodes. Uh, we're getting close. Thanks for being here and uh, we've enjoyed doing this so far and looks like we'll uh, keep on doing it. <laughs> uh, we've got some cool stuff to talk about today, but uh, wanted to start out with a an update for uh, tests that are coming in. And so we do have tests Fast test results will go out multiple times this week. Um, the next big run for tests that we can't do as a fast test yet. Um, and then also for the, the full panel, the 22 gene panels, uh, those will all get done the first week of April. And you should have results the second week of April. And as that gets closer, like we said last week, we'll give you a little bit more specifics. But that's what we're, we're our, our best information right now. So it's coming soon. So Kayla, how are you doing? Hey, Ben, I'm doing great. Uh, still um, pretty much, the, oh my gosh, Potato is here in the video again. It's my black cat <laughs> if you guys haven't seen her before, but she's she doesn't always grace us with her presence, so that's very special. Um, <laughs> but I'm great. <laughs> how about you? Good. I'm doing all right. How's Aster doing? Aster is well, um, eating and has not passed any slugs. Um, for those of you who... Uh, I haven't caught the last couple episodes. My beautiful moon dust hog nose uh, or Arctic lavender um, is egg bound kind of or just taking her time passing some slugs. Uh, we got one fertile egg that sadly I think might actually be going bad um, in the incubator. But, you know, I'm going to incubate till there's no debate. Um, but, yeah, she's got six slugs left in her. And so here's. I mean, she's eating fine. Uh, she's pooping fine. Just taking her sweet time and getting daily, twice daily massages now. So she's spoiled. <laughs> so I know you were thinking about surgery, but I guess you got some information that's kind of changed your mind or at least yes. wait. Yeah, I talked with uh, Tom Harbin and Jeff Galewood, and um, I'm still getting like some info from other breeders who have dealt with it. And they're like, honestly, as long as she's acting fine, eating fine, and, you know, sometimes they're just going to take months to pass slugs, uh, which is, I mean, I'm really glad I know this now, um, and I'm glad she doesn't have to go to surgery. Um, in the next week or two, uh, if she still hasn't passed uh, passed them all, I might take her in for some antibiotics just to make sure no infection set in, but otherwise she's just going to take her time and, uh, you know... Um, Keep, keep me stringing along, I guess. But mm. on the bright side, that's it. Um, hopefully, if it looks like we'll still be able to try again next year and see if we have better luck. Um, so, uh, honestly, it could be a much worse end to that saga. Um, yeah. So, I guess we'll find out. Uh, just a wait, waiting game now. So there have been hognose females that take a long time to let to uh, get all of the infertiles out but then the next yeah. year they breed okay yeah it can happen i mean sometimes they continue having issues but uh the stories i heard from tom and jeff they said that they've had girls take like four months to lay all of their slugs and do just fine some girls will have a perfect first year and then do this their second year or vice versa they'll have a rough first year and then be golden for the rest of the time so and then other times it's just an issue again and again so really it's hard to say um and then some of them are just super fertile anyway. So if they're going to be laying slugs, well, you may as well pair them up because uh, if it does come to like, you know, an egg is bound in the oviduct and you have to aspirate one, you want it to be fertile because then you can actually get the amniotic fluid out of there so it can pass through easier. You can't really do that with a slug. Um, so uh, lots of... Uh, lots of uh, potentials in there. So it's um, a bit of a hassle mentally, but you know, it's, um, you know, that's something you, that you can deal with as a breeder. So uh, uh, I'm just hoping next year we come through with flying colors. That's a major bummer. It's your very first flight and it ends up like this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, granted, I did see a good lock with my rat snakes. Um, Mr. Lemon bars back there in a, uh, that other side this tank right here um i have mr lemon bars my big yellow boy and his um 
I've seen a positive lock with one of his girls, not the other one that I really want, but my head lightning. So um, the, it's a clutch that'll come out like 50, 50 black rat snake, 50, 50 um, lightning morph. So they're like a really pretty straw yellow, like um, their dad, but uh, boy figured it out. And I was so proud of him. Mm. <laughs> um, have seen that. Hopefully that takes. Um, so we'll see. Cool. And hopefully that clutch is much easier if it does take. So, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I hope I just used all of my bad luck with Aster. And then from here, it's smooth sailing. I hope. Yes. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about uh, some Desert Ghost stuff. Where are, things, where are things with that for us? So just have people still asking questions. And I uh, mm -hmm. just wanted to let people know we are going back through now and getting some of the, the work done on, on uh, specific samples that uh, you know, we either got a no all the way across, so we wanted to make sure we had the right shed, or like there's a bunch of D, DGBs that were reruns. We're going back through, so that big run that we'll do the first week of April and have results the second week of April, uh, we'll fill in some more of this free DG sheet. I know some of you are interested in seeing what your DGB result was, and that's the only thing you have as a rerun. Um, so yeah, I'm making my way through that still, getting those results for you. And I uh, also wanted to just give one more thank you to Kayla Duff from Inspiration Exotics uh, for helping out with going through the all the pictures. We had over, you know, we had 550 uh, samples come in and the vast majority of those had pictures and we've since had some, you know, Kayla helped point out some that maybe the picture was incorrect or maybe they were just swapped and other people have reached out and let us know. We've started going in and fixing some of those pictures. So awesome. Uh, if, if you don't see that in the link right now, we may have fixed it and we just haven't updated it again, but we will after we get the results uh, after this next big run. Um, we'll we'll update those again and we'll update pictures and things like that. And then if you still see problems, let us know and we'll we'll get it fixed again. And hopefully over the next couple of months, we can get the vast majority of the results there and be able to have everything all shiny and good. And I know I think it was Civil Serpents. Can't remember for sure. Um, Kayla Duff uh, suggested that he he was working on a way to visualize the results. So once we have everything there or the vast majority of it there and uh, things all looking good, then maybe we'll we'll reach out to him and, and see what he's got as a way to be able to visualize and compare and stuff like that. That'll be cool. That would be really cool to see. Yeah. Awesome. Well, looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So fast testing um, still. I, I love that we're able to have um, multiple results going out every single week. Yes. Uh, because of that. And we're, well, yeah, go, go ahead and uh, tell us fast test stuff. <laughs> yeah. So nothing new from last week, but for those of you that didn't see last week, we've got, I believe it's 18 that we can test for as fast tests. So we're about two thirds of the way there. Yeah. And, uh, we've got several more that will be coming in the next week or two, something like that. And then uh, by sometime in April, we should have all 30 available as fast tests. So We've uh, seen lots of people posting very, very happy and, and thankful to have a sheds be received on one day and have results the next day and stuff like that. And, and uh, yeah, it definitely feels much better. And if we do have to have a rerun, then, you know, we can just do it two days later instead of having to wait two or three weeks or a month if we're doing these, these big runs. Yeah. So very, very thankful to be able to turn things around quick. Very good. And yeah, uh, it's almost, I can't believe it's almost April already. So we've got that coming up pretty quick. Oh yeah. Uh, cool. And we're still on track for it and everything, right? Yep. Yep. Still looking good. Excellent. Uh, cool. Um, so in a totally different uh, gear, we have a, um, there was a uh, paper published um, about three different Agistrodon species. So your, uh, your cotton mouths. Uh, so, Let's see, northern cottonmouths, Florida cottonmouths, and uh, eastern copperheads, I believe. Um, so what you see here are uh, three different pictures of male-male um, ritual combat. But um, the unique thing about these is that all three of these pictures are not males fighting over 
females, like we've seen documented in pit vipers before, but they're actually fighting over food. Uh, That's crazy. Right? Yeah. Um, Because most snakes, I mean, I I think we've all seen videos of uh, of videos or at least heard of, um, you know, with some species, you know, if you're feeding a bunch of babies together or you'll see it out in the wild with water snakes, they'll both like go for one end of a fish and start eating it. And then like one starts to swallow another. Sometimes hopefully they figure it out and then throw the other one up and they're like, Oh, I just got eaten. Uh, That that happened with a couple of centralian pythons. They were like seven seven feet long. They're (gasps) going after a rat. I had them separated and like one side, like capped off so that she couldn't get over there. But I turned my back for less than a minute and she had popped Mm -hmm. the cap and gone over and they were both on that rat. You know, they didn't get to the point where they're, you know, on each other, but yeah, it took me a while to get one of them to back off of it. It was not easy. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you were able to get them before, uh, before they got onto each other because they, pythons have gnarlier teeth than like water snakes. And well, maybe, yeah, water snakes, even though water snakes have gnarly teeth too. But, um, yeah, yeah. but anyway, so apparently, uh, according to this study, uh, these guys, um, in, the Agistrodon genus, at least with males, they're able to um, identify, you know, hey, here's this toad that has been envenomated. And I can see that it's food, but somebody else wants it. And they will display a combat ritual where they um, lift up their upper third and they will like try to inter- entwine themselves and try to knock the other one over to determine who gets the toad or whatever foods that source that is. Um, which is coconuts and uh, <laughs> really, really cool. Um, a lot of these pictures came from uh, a page called Cottonmouth Acres, which is run by, I believe, a herpetologist, Fred Boyce. He's out of North Carolina. Um, and so a lot of some of these um, documentations came from his work down there, uh, observing these cottonmouths. Um, a seriously amazing page. I recommend following it. Uh, lots of really unique behaviors. Um, love it. Uh, the photo on the right is actually from a story. Uh, these two are on the right side actually are, uh, just doing ritualized combat for a female, but the whole story is, uh, one male waiting on a female, uh, who has her half, her newborns with her still, but, uh, another male approaches they're in combat. And another little guy who uh, Fred dubbed as Sneaky Pete uh, sneaks in past that and buddy buddies up with the female and actually gets her while the other two are co- are duking it out. <laughs> um, and Zelda, the um, the princess in the tower, as it were, the female that they're fighting for, seems to actually prefer him. And even her uh, hatchlings or her um, her litter seem to actually like interact better with sneaky Pete than they ever did with one of the combating males. Hmm. Um, really interesting story. Highly recommend it. Um, if you're a, a lover of uh, any North American species, pit vipers, or just cotton mouths in general, uh, super cool stuff. Um, so I wanted to share that paper with you guys. It kind of makes sense. It's another resource they're competing for, but I would, yeah. they would, they would do that like you when you or i you and i were talking about it, it makes you feel like they're they are a little smarter than we thought <laughs> yeah uh definitely and i at least i've noticed in i don't know this is this may have no tracking whatsoever but at least in my personal observations i've noticed in species that tend to give live birth they do have seem to have more documented social behaviors than species that are egg laying um like you know like there's a paper a couple of months ago that came out about garter snakes having uh long distance like friendship networks um Hmm. that are usually based around one older female um like up to like 40 individuals there's a friendship network and then before that another paper showing that garter snakes do in fact make friends and best friends and hmm. like if their best friend uh, passes away, they actually show depressive behaviors and may even pass away as well. So, hmm. yeah, um, I'd have to pull up those papers to show them off, too. But they're extremely cool. Um, and uh, 
I don't know of this kind of behavior happening in other egg laying species. I'm not sure if that is a factor in it or not, but um, still very cool. Uh, and I love to see more, um, more studies about the hidden social relationships that we don't get to see in uh, wild snakes or even captive, captive ones um, in more uh, natural environments, I guess. Um, yeah. Natural behaviors in wild or captive snakes. How about that? Um, yeah. yeah that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, Ben, you found some stuff on a, a Facebook page, the World of Ball Pythons, recently. And yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. There's a couple of posts this last week that I thought were pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so this, it's a little harder to see. I'll blow it up a bit more. Um, this was from Double KB Morphs on the World of Ball Pythons page. It says, uh, this was a clutch he got, um, they got, and it said, you know, I hit that 116 odds. Surprisingly, though, no other Azanthics or Pieds. The pairing was <laughs> Het Azanthic and Het Pied crossed with a DG Het Azanthic, Het Pied, or another sire, a het azanthic het pied. So double heads all the way, had 116 odds of getting both. And they just got the one heart, one het azanthic het pied and all normals. <laughs> yeah, getting that double visual is really cool. Like that. Yeah. Um, there's only, I think there's what, eight babies there? Uh, looks like it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, eight babies. Yeah, that was good odds as far as getting, you got one out of eight, but but yeah, then not getting any pies or any examples. <laughs> oh, that's definitely crazy. That, it's a okay. great example of, you know, you know what the odds are and then what actually happens sometimes varies widely from what the odds are. <laughs> yeah, it is. Statistics are wild. Um, yeah. but that, that's a... That's a fun story. I mean, at least they got their azanthic pie. That's yeah. That's really sweet. So. Oh yeah. And then uh, the other cool thing is mm -hmm. the potential for uh, for all of those, all or some of those, since there are two sires, one that's a DG and one that's not. You know, those could be some or all of them could be het DG too, which makes that a a really cool clutch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. And the other one was, uh, I thought this was cool and it's kind of still an ongoing mystery here. Um, but it was posted by Jerry Robertson on the same page. Uh, last post on this clutch got my test back from rare genetics. That's us. Uh, the vanilla potion is not het clown. Uh, and it's a 100% partho clutch from a mystic female. Yeah. So since it's just a mystic, as far as he knew, a mystic female, um, like we talked about in our Parthenogenesis episode, which is mm -hmm. last May, because I remember it was on Mother's Day. Um, yeah. So several episodes back. But um, since the female is just a mystic that he knows of, we really should only be able to get either a completely normal, where you don't get the mystic uh, mutation at all, or a homozygous <laughs> or uh, super mystic. Um, but you can see here, these are all females, which that's what you would expect from parthenogenesis. Yeah. Uh, but you can see here, there's one that's obviously not the same as the others. <laughs> yeah. And that's like, very strange because they should either be super mystic or normal. And and the uh, the light one did test as being super mystic. And the sire, potential sire, had Mojave in him. So we also tested for Mojave. It was negative for Mojave. And he was also... <laughs> clown so any of his offspring should be het for clown and it's not het clown either so it definitely seems to be a parthenogenesis or parthenogenetic offspring um, that is a super mystic but what makes it light compared to the others the the first thing we thought since we had the shed here anyway when i saw this post mm -hmm. uh, we went ahead and ran it for hypo and it's negative yeah. for hypo so <laughs> weird yeah, yeah. I wonder what's going on in that snake. Uh, Very strange. He he did mention there's another line of hypo or ghost um, that some people have that that maybe could be involved. Um, ooh. So we'll see. That that's you know it's a it's a less, much less common line and would test negative on our test because it's not a compatible um, hypo line. Right. But yeah, or it's something different and. She's het for it and just never been bred to anything that's also het for it, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. 
That is so interesting. Well, I'm, I know I'm going to be looking forward to updates on this. Uh, Jerry, keep posting if you find out more. Um, yeah. And there's one other one that we'll have to hit in the next yeah. week or two mm -hmm. uh, from Matthew Kriego. Hopefully I'm saying your name right, but that's yeah. another interesting one where things are popping out that don't really make sense. And Ooh. we've talked for everything that we thought it could be, and it's negative for all of that. So, so anyway, we'll have another interesting one to talk about here in the next week or two, probably. Yeah. Oh, that'll be exciting. Um, so we started doing a shed donor shout out lately that, uh, well, we're doing it again this week. Um, this time around, we have JDH Reptiles, uh, who we've had on the show before. And I think we actually brought him on or at least showed off one of his like his partho clutch Part, yeah. on the episode we mentioned before uh, on our Mother's Day special. Um, and uh, well, he's uh, also sent in. I don't know what all what all has he sent in for us, Ben? Oh, he was one of the very, very first people to send in um, packages full. I mean, he's probably sent at least, definitely at least 50, if not over 100. <laughs> Woo! Uh, sent in quite a few for <clears throat> different tests. Um, I remember specifically using his for genetic stripe test. I used quite a few, but I mean, he sent, you know, several different mutations labeled well and very usable and yes thank you dave that was very very helpful and like i said from from the very beginning he jumped at that and took the time to collect and send them in and, and like we said you know previous week we're, we're very thankful to all of you that have done that and that's why every episode we're going to keep highlighting you all uh, because we definitely could not do what we're doing without these these donations coming in absolutely seriously we could not do it without you guys Oh, so if you so, go and you see something interesting that he has, give him some support. And oh yeah, get something from him or like, subscribe to his his social media things like that. Or definitely mm -hmm. for what he's done. Yeah, Dave is good people. Thanks, Dave. Um, and of course, uh, we like uh, if you want to be a part of our shed donor shout out. Um, chances are we like. Chances are we've either already gotten your sheds or they're in the mail to us. Um, definitely let us know, um, if you have some pictures, uh, that you want to show off, you know, send us your name, logo, your morph market link or a website link, um, morphs you're excited about, pics you'd love to share, what have you, um, all to raregeneticsocial at gmail.com. Um, that way I'll get it and it'll end up on our show. So, uh, just, oh God, here comes the cat again. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Ah. She's been, <laughs> thanks potato. I guess she just wants to make sure that you guys like her too. She's don't tell anybody, but she's kind of a jerk. She's very pretty, but kind of a jerk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, cat. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, uh, we have our, why I do this segment that we do um, most weeks, uh, which, you know, we're kind of, we're actually, I'm actually running a little bit low on why we do this story. So definitely send us a, like, let us know what makes this hobby special to you. Um, and uh, for this week's, we have one from Dustin Merriman. Uh, and he posted one of his, one of the things that make this hobby worthwhile for him uh, is, I do this because I went to clean tubs and bam, girl on eggs. Total surprise, missed all the signs. It's like Christmas and your birthday wrapped in one. Uh, he had an ODYB vanilla crossed with an ODYB vanilla. So... Fingers crossed for supers. Uh, these pictures below, I couldn't find any pictures or morph market uh, or a morph market for Dustin. Um, so we just got some pictures of some of Ben's girls on eggs um, uh, to add along with this. So yeah, finding girls on eggs when you expect it is cool, but even when you don't expect it, also cool. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome, and fingers crossed to get your supers, Dustin. Yes. All right. So I reckon that's uh that's kind of all we have for today. Um, so make sure you like, subscribe, comment below, and uh, you know do all the stuff that you know makes the algorithm like us. That way we can get some more people in the hobby. And uh, Ben, you got anything for us before we call it a day? Nope. Just thanks again. We're staying busy. Uh, we we thought these would be the slower months, and we've stayed very busy and. We're looking forward to the the summer, the baby season, where we'll likely be even more busy than this. And 
Woo! Thankful for that and we'll keep getting better we'll get more tests hopefully in the next couple of weeks i'll be able to start talking about um, new test development and things that are coming through that look like we're going to be able to nail down so we'll have some some new tests for you and and also some new species that we'll be working on here in the next couple of months so it's looking good awesome well sounds good thanks guys and y'all have a great week we'll see you next time outro in three two one Thank you.